just principles. This is a high level summary of this stuff. It's not an in-depth deal, but here's the thing. Okay. Pre-internet, the problem was not enough information. I was 17 going to the library, reading retirement books and reading market wizards about John or Paul Tudor Jones, the hedge fund manager. Okay. Um, post internet, the problem now is information overload. And the vast majority of financial information out there is garbage. The signal to noise ratio is like, you know, 0.01% of it is actually useful. You've got uh, 22 year old kids on YouTube giving financial advice to hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And these kids haven't even earned a hundred thousand dollars in their lives or let alone a million dollars. Okay. Um, I'm by far not the most successful person in the world. I'll be the first to tell you that, but I've earned six figures in trading. I was a prop trader in my early twenties, uh, in sales. And now in my mid thirties in uh, a personal development business. Um, and as a young trader, okay, I had $3 million in buying power and my best month was a hundred grand take home, which is 15 years ago in us dollars while I was living in Canada. Okay. I, I was for a brief period. I was quite successful as a trader. Still that run is still the most successful run that I've had. Um, won't be for long, but, uh, I can tell you with certainty, no one knows where the, where the market's going. Nobody knows. We used to, we used to laugh and make fun of the guys on CNBC all day. The economists would come on. They'd be like, well, it's just a temporary correction. We believe that, uh, uh the market should, uh, uh, readjust to their, uh, forward positions and talking straight out of their ass. Okay. If they actually knew where the fuck the market was going, they would place bets on it. They would be consistently right. And they would be a trillionaire in no time. Okay. Because the snowball and the compound interest of being able to literally take all your money, be right every single time, um, would be incredible. Okay. Um, nobody knows, right. And if they know they're not going to tell anybody, the last thing they're going to do is, is create an options course, um, and sell it to you online or sell it to you like they used to do through, through infomercials. Okay. Um, they're going to keep that knowledge to themselves, you know, just like Ray Dalio is, is who by far is not, he's not even close to hundred percent right, but is extremely guarded about the kind of information that he will release to the public. And if he's releasing something, there is a purpose and a point to his communication. And that purpose and point is going to be his own self-interest. Okay. The last thing anybody would do is broadcast that knowledge to millions of people. Um, when, when that knowledge could make them billions. All right. Unless their, their, um, modus operandi is to get rich off selling the course. Okay. Which in most cases, that is how things work. Okay. Most guys don't get rich off the gold rush. They get rich off selling panhandles in the gold rush on average. So I can tell you with certainty, no one knows where the market's going. Um, the best in the world are wrong all the time. They're just right slightly more than they're wrong. I was able to make good money on it because, uh, the day trading firm I worked with had a lot of leverage because they, the guys who started the business went into it with $40 million already. And then they were able to leverage that into a lot of, um, leverage from a brokerage house because they had very strict controls on us. We were only allowed to lose a certain amount of money per day. We had, uh, managers washing us. Um, so the, we weren't allowed to hold overnight positions. We had lightning fast execution and we were doing, um, arbitrage things that are, are not even close to possible anymore. Okay. This was 15 years ago. Uh, all that stuff is done by algorithms and, you know, basically we're the last of the cowboy traders. Now it's, it's quants and, and, uh, guys with rocket scientist IQs programming these, these algos. Um, so, so even, even those wins that I had, are not possible. Otherwise I would still be trading. Okay. Um, so, so that's the reality. And it was like, when I was right, I could predict where the market would go for about 10 seconds to maybe five minutes if I was lucky. And that five minutes was going to be a big winner. Uh, but I was wrong half the time. Okay. I was just able to cut my losses quick due to the discipline that I've been trained in 
uh, and, and been able to let my winners ride, which is the opposite of most human instincts. That takes like a year and a half of, of going in there every day, getting your head beat in to, to you start to realize like, you know, I have to, if the, if the market doesn't go where I think it's going to go in this 10 seconds, I have to be out regardless. Um, so there was some momentum, there was arbitrage, but none of those options are, are available anymore. And there is no way I could predict where it would be a year from now, six months from now, three months from now, even the next day, I couldn't predict the open. Okay, no one can predict that with certainty. You can look back over the last hundred years and say, okay, on average, the um, S&P has gone up 8%. There's a crash every decade. You know, moving forward, past doesn't predict the future, but, um, you know, that trend could continue. But, okay, that trend was also like the most profitable hundred years in the most profitable empire of all time, the American empire. Will that continue for another hundred years? I'm sure America will be around. Will that, will that same amount of um, prosperity in, in terms of their companies continue? No idea. Okay. No idea. Um, so, so that's where I'm coming from with it. Okay. If, if you've been a trader, you'll know that any time, and when one of my clients was a high level uh, you know, interest trader, he'll tell you the same thing, right? Nobody knows where this shit's going, let alone the broker, now called the, the financial advisor. Okay, if anyone would know it'd be a trader, but, but you know, it, it, it's, that's not the game, okay? So I can tell you with certainty, no one knows where the market's going. The best in the world are wrong all the time. They're just right slightly more than they're wrong, you know? They're, they're right 60% of the time, or they're right 58% of the time, but they um, cut their losers quick and they let their winners ride. All right. Uh, the, the, the best in the business, Warren Buffett, George Soros, um, Ray Dalio average no better than 20% a year. Okay. So it's not like these guys are getting consistently crazy returns. Yes. The market averages 8%. So 20% is great in comparison to that, but it's not like 2000% a year. Okay. And these guys blow up all the time, you know, go back into the the nineties and look at long-term capital management. These guys were the rocket scientists, I think, out of Solomon Brothers, and they went out and did their own thing. Thought they knew where the market was going. They had certainty. Fun blew up. Uh, head guy was able to raise more money a few years later, but um, they didn't know where it was going. Okay, and truth be told, on a long enough timeline, every everyone fails. Okay, if Warren Buffett and George Soros and those guys lived to a thousand years, they'd all go broke. All right, all right. So so so. Take certainty out of the table, off the table, right? We're just trying to out, we're trying to get wealthy within this one lifetime and trying to outlive that money. Okay, we 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 want that timeline to 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 end on our grandson or our great grandson or you know uh, and and have him rebuild that or maybe longer. But you know, at the end of the day, um, the best guys are doing twenty percent a year. Okay, and. That 20% didn't make them billionaires, okay? You, you know, Warren Buffett's little savings back in 1945 didn't make him a billionaire. What made him a, a, a billionaire was beating the S&P by 12% every year so that he, he consistently became the best service provider in that niche. And as I keep telling you guys, the three biggest niches in the world for service providers in terms of financial potential are real estate, insurance, and financial services, financial services being the big one. Hedge fund managers are strictly service providers, okay? That's their job. And their job is to beat the S&P and take their 20 and two in, in, in return for doing so. So Warren Buffett is a service provider, okay? His service is beating the S&P by 12% every year, which is a pittance to a per poor person who's got like $1,000 and, you know, 20% a year is, 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 is $200 a year. It's nothing. But to a billionaire, you know, that 20%, that 12% that beats the S&P, that 20% compounded every year is worth an absolute fortune. Okay, so they're willing to give him a lot of money for that service because they solve, he solves one of the biggest problems for um, a wealthy person, which is how to continue to increase their money uh, without um, actively having to manage it 
as well as having how to protect that money because you know at the end of the day taxes and inflation apply to wealthy people as well so they want to be able to get that money invest it um, not have to actively manage it and sell their time for money beat inflation and taxes and still um, create more wealth and, and, and compound that wealth. All right, so that's what, that's what uh, George Soros, Warren Buffett, and Ray Dalio do, okay? What got them rich was the same thing that gets everyone rich. It was, it was uh, opium or other people's money. It was just getting other people to give them money, right? And then taking a piece of that in, in, in return for the service they provide. That's it, okay? That's the same way you get rich in any other service business, whether it's what I do is coaching or real estate or insurance. You get opium, other people's money, by selling them that you're the best service provider, okay? Fund managers are really nothing more than service providers with the service they attempt to provide being beaten the S&P every year, okay? And they, they run these service businesses off of their salesmanship. They sell their billion dollar clients that they will uh, beat the S&P um, and get more consistent returns than their customers, okay? And it's a very competitive market. And they're not just selling billion dollar customers, they're selling the firefighters uh, fund. They're selling sovereign wealth funds of other company, uh, other countries. They're selling the police unions fund. So these guys are competing for uh, the teachers union, right? These unions that have, have a ton of money tied up in the pensions and, and all, all these workers, and they go give it to hedge funds to, to gamble with. And, um, you know, it's very serious because, you know, these guys lose money. It's like they're losing the New York Firefighters Association's money. So this is a very, very competitive uh, business um, and dealing with, you know, the largest clients in the world. But at the end of the day, they're sales guys um, who, who are very talented and, and who, are, who are masters of their service. And they sell that service to wealthy clients. This is why Warren Buffett openly admits that the most useful course he took of all his education was the Dale Carnegie course, How to Win Friends and Influence People. The plaque is still on his wall in his office. If you want more information on that, check out the article I did on it, revolutionarylifestylezen.com, or the video I did on it and how I use that, those principles in my daily life. One of the best books I've ever read.